All right, let's talk about poly painting basics. Um, in order to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and go to our simple brush into the tool palette. We'll take the plane 3D, drag it out on our canvas, go into edit mode. And because this is a primitive, I'm gonna go ahead and hit make poly mesh 3D. And now it's a poly mesh 3D, PM 3D plane. And now I can start manipulating this. So normally with the standard brush, we have Z add turned on with a Z intensity at 25. And we can start sculpting on our object here. Now we've already talked about resolution, so if we want to have higher resolution geometry, we can go in here and we can hit divide, that'll up-res this, and of course it averages our vertices, so you can see the corners are kind of um, averaging, and then this is kind of getting soft. So now when I do another stroke, it's a little bit higher res, I can hit divide, this stroke will be even higher res, I can hit divide, and now our point count is up here at 66,000, and now this one will be very high res. So a little bit of brush basics. And the reason I bring this up and I'm undoing back to where we just had our regular plane here is because RGB works in the same way. So we remember we skipped, uh, we talked about Z add and Z sub already. We skipped MRGB, RGB, and M. If you hover over these, you're gonna see this is MRGB channel. If you hit control, it'll give you even more information. Essentially, this allows you to paint materials all these materials here, you can paint with materials, and you can also paint with RGB values, which RGB values are essentially what you see here, just color spectrum, and you can just paint with materials. And while you're doing all this, you can do it while you sculpt, or you can just paint. So for instance, if I have Z add turned on, I can sculpt. If I have RGB turned on, I can sculpt and I can paint. Now let's talk a little bit about that. So I'm gonna undo both of those here. I'm gonna turn RGB back off and we're gonna talk about Colorize. So Colorize is this little brush over here. And if you want more poly paint options, and we'll get heavier into these poly paint options later on in the series, but you can see we have a Colorize. There's also poly paint from texture, poly paint from poly groups. But for now, this Colorize button, when I toggle that on, it's gonna turn on that paintbrush. So that's what that does is turn Colorize on and off. So with Colorize off, if I go over here and I select a color like green or blue or whatever, it's gonna turn the entire object that color. In fact, if I don't have any materials assigned, I can go through here and I can choose any material and it'll go ahead and update this object with that material. Now, as soon as I turn this colorize on, the object's gonna turn white. I still have blue selected and I can go over here and I can choose the colors, but it's gonna stay white. And that's because by default, objects in ZBrush, if they're imported without vertex color or if you start with a primitive, it's going to have all the vertex colors are assigned a white value. So I can go over here and I can sculpt on this white plane with colorize on and it's not gonna do anything. However, when I turn RGB on and I have that blue color selected, now when I sculpt, it's going to sculpt and color with that blue color. So if I go to the side here, you can see it's sculpting as well as assigning an RGB value. Now it looks pretty low res, it looks a little bit gross. That's based on the resolution of the object. So this isn't painting on a texture, like if you're in a texture painting program and you draw on your object and it, you're actually drawing on like, a texture with the UVs assigned, that's not what's happening here. In ZBrush, what you're doing is you're actually assigning a color value to every vertice on this object. So you can see, if I go across this line, it's gonna paint those blue. If I go down this line, it's gonna paint those blue. If I go across, it's gonna get kind of aliased because it's having to paint on those vertices. So vertices are what holds the color on these components. So you're not really painting on faces, you're painting on vertices. Now, if you paint four vertices, you're gonna paint a whole face but really it's the vertex that you're applying those RGB values to. Now, if we turn polyframe off, and let's go ahead and undo back to where we just had our plane here. Let's turn colorize back on. Let's turn Z add off for now, and we're just gonna use RGB. So we're using the standard brush with RGB selected, and you can go through here and you can paint. If you tap S, you can make your brush size bigger or smaller, and you can do soft to heavy. So you can go soft to heavy, and just using your tablet pressure. You can also lower the RGB value, so you can drop that RGB intensity down. Uh, we'll get a little bit into that later, so we're going to keep that up at 100 for now. And now if we go back hit down here to our geometry here, we can start painting, and then we can hit divide, and then we can start painting again. We can hit divide, we can start painting again, and you're going to see every single time, and I'm going to make my brush a little smaller, every time we divide, we're getting more and more resolution, like so. And these still look pretty low res, but if I put a stroke right next to this at this subdivision level, you're gonna see how much higher resolution that is. And that's because if I go into polyframe now and look at our active points, we're now painting on 260,000 active points. A lot more vertices are catching that information than when you're in subdivision level one at 1,000 points. So if I turn polyframe off, you're gonna see, just like when we're sculpting, it's gonna look low res, but then when we go back up through our subdivision history, we don't lose any detail. We can just drop down, we can paint at this, we can sculpt on the subdivision level, and we can raise it back up. 
and begin painting again. Of course, you can choose any different color. So you can paint blue, you can paint green. If you hold down Alt, that'll do your alternate color. And if you hold down Shift, you're going to see, you know, Shift is a modifier brush. So when I hold down Shift here, you're going to see Z Add pops back on. If you just want to smooth out your colors, hold down Shift, turn off Z Add, and now you're just going to smooth RGB values. So this is a really good way to just go through and kind of blur colors together or just blur out details like so. So let's go ahead and take our undo slider and we'll undo back to where we just had our primitive polyplane here. Actually, let's go ahead and divide this up. So we'll hit divide a couple times. I just want to get some resolution on here so we have some quality on here. And you'll notice that with these stroke options here, we do have lazy mouse on. If we go to stroke and then crank that lazy radius up, you can see we can paint with very smooth strokes here. If we hit X, we can go across X symmetry. So if you wanted to, and we'll talk about quick sketch uh, later on too, but you can go ahead and you can, uh, that's another thing too. If you hold down, I should probably talk about this, with stroke turned on, or stroke lazy mouse turned on, when you hold down shift, it's going to put a line, and then if you let go of shift, it'll snap to that end. If it doesn't go all the way to the end where you stopped, that's a function of this lady ra lazy radius. Turn that lazy radius back down, and now when you hold down shift, it'll snap all the way to the end. So you can go through here, and then you can hold down shift and snap, hold down shift and snap, and you can snap to different degrees, and you can just snap in between those. We'll talk more about these stroke options later, as far as roll, backtrack, all of that stuff, but that shift functionality, this happens, that rubber band comes out when you have lazy mouse turned on. If we undo all that, and then we go to stroke and we turn lazy mouse off where we tap L on our keyboard. Now, when you hold down shift, it'll actually constrain it to an up and down straight or side to side straight or a 45 degree angle straight. So start drawing and then hold down shift and now you're constraining it to an angle. So with lazy mouse off, you can just hold down shift and go in a straight line. Let's go ahead and undo that. Here's another trick. If you hit W and then hit the Y key, you'll get the transpose line. So if, let's say you wanted to put a line from here and let's go ahead and go out of X symmetry, so tap X. And then we have our transpose line, so if you just touch your object and you go down, say, from this line here, and you want to put a straight line right across here, go ahead and put your transpose line here, hover over this white circle right here, hold down Control, and then tap that white circle, and that's going to rotate your camera, so now this is straight across. Go ahead and hit Q to go into draw mode, so hitting W goes into gizmo mode, Q goes back into draw mode, and now you can go here, to here, just holding down shift and make a straight line exactly where that transpose line was. And then you can hold down shift and rotate your object back. So anyway, with X symmetry turned on, you can make a straight line down the middle. And then if you wanted to like make a head or something, you can just start drawing within ZBrush. Now, like I said before, we'll get into quick sketch as well. which will have a lot of the same functionality, but we're just painting on a plane right now. Let's go ahead and drag that undo slider back. Let's go back to our blank canvas. Actually, you know what, what else we can do? Go up here to color, and you're gonna see we have a fill object. If your RGB intensity is at 100, and you go to color, fill object, and you have the white color selected, and you fill, it'll go ahead and just clear your canvas. Now, if we undo that and drop our RGB intensity down to like 26, and we go color, fill, it's only gonna do a 26% fill. So you can kind of knock this back and then you can go back in here and you can kind of refine the sketch if that's what you want to do. Or if you want to clear this thing, you can just crank that RGB intensity up to 100, color, fill object. Oops, make sure you have white selected. And there you go. Now, outside of the texture, before you start painting, you can also paint, or you can also go through here and modify things after they've been painted. Uh, let's bring in something. Let's go into my load tool here. We'll bring in another demo project. I'm going to select... Skin Shader 4, turn on M, go to Color Fill Object with the head selected, and we'll go into solo mode, just kind of focus on this. So here we have a poly painted object here. Now let's say I want to kind of pump up this contrast a little bit. I've done a lot of painting and it's not quite as poppy as I want it to be. So again, this is on my poly paint, it's not a texture, so it's on my vert colors. I can still go down here to poly paint. And I can go here to adjust colors, and now I have the exact same functionality I had in the texture adjust. So if I just want to change the overall intensity, I can just go down here to RGB intensity and really crank that up. If I want to adjust that hue a little bit, maybe make them a little more green, or a little more red, I can dial that in. If I want to do a tint wash over him, I can kind of just do a, you know, a little poly paint over him. 
If I'm happy with this, I can hit OK. And there we go. Our polypanes have been updated. Now when I turn off solo mode, you're going to see if I tap the body here, and we go to color, fill object, and just fill that with skin shader, you're going to see how much more uh, contrasty this is. Same thing for the horns. So let's tap the body here. Let's go back into adjust colors. And again, we'll just crank that intensity up. Now, if I go back to the head, I'm like, you know what? I like that a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to go back to the head, just alt tap the head subtool and undo and go back to this state, then go right back into adjust colors and just dial in that same intensity. And you kind of keep playing around with this. So I change the RGB intensity, I hit OK. I'm like, oh, that's not exactly right. I can undo that. And then when I go in here to adjust colors, I have the exact same uh, RGB intensity plugged in. If you want to, you can go up here to reset, and that'll go ahead and reset everything, and then you can just start over from scratch. Now, just like when we were playing around with the textures, if you go into adjust colors, you see you have inverse mask turned on, so we can grab any of these. I'm like, you know what? The red areas, I want to go ahead and mask those. And we can play around with the tolerance. Again, if you want to hide those colors temporarily to see what you're getting, or if you want to blur the mask any while you're working, you don't want it to be super contrasty. You can hide the mask if you want to hide it temporarily. Change the tolerance level to just grab less or more. Go back here to invert mask. So you're again, you're just grabbing, you're just masking out the red areas. And as those areas masked, anything you do, and you hit OK, and it'll actually carry that mask out. So if you control drag, you can unmask, or you can control tap to invert that mask. And now you can make adjustments to this, or you can go through and sculpt. So you can actually use poly paint and adjust colors to not only change your poly paint, but also give you a mask if you have one loaded in there. Let's go ahead and undo that. Let's go back into adjust colors. And just like before, let's go ahead and hit reset. If you need to grab kind of like a slight gradient or a couple more pieces, kind of like in Photoshop when you're doing a select by color range, you can go through here and you can be like, okay, give me, let's go ahead and invert, invert our mask here. So like, give me these browns. And also I'm gonna go down to there to the second one and give me like maybe some of these light browns. And maybe on this one, we'll change that tolerance back a little bit. And that'll just give you a little more range. So you can grab the dark browns and maybe some of the lighter browns. Then we can invert that mask and we can hide the mask temporarily. So if we wanna go ahead and make changes to this, like, you know what, I want this to be a little more intense or a little less intense, maybe a little darker, maybe push a little bit more towards the reds, maybe drop the intensity down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good, I can hit okay. I can control drag to unmask everything. And now all of those color ranges have been adjusted to that darker tone. If I hit Control Z, you can see the difference. Or go here between this point and this point. And if you remember, if it's a bit much, you just want to make some small tweaks. Remember, you can always go back here, uh, Control Tap this point in your history, go all the way back up, do BHR History Recall Brush, have RGB turned on, drop that intensity down, and now you can kind of go through and brush back your original uh, a little bit, or make slight adjustments based on uh, your original poly paint. If you want to kind of knock some of this stuff back. Or maybe along the chin, you didn't want it so intense. So you can just kind of go through and just lightly brush back that intensity a bit in some areas. It's a slight addendum I want to make to the texture one. If you want to do a texture adjust on this object, you can. You can if you don't feel like doing a poly paint adjust, or if you created a texture out of here, if you did like a texture map create new from poly paint, what you'll have to do is go in here to clone texture, and then you have access to that texture. It'll be selected, and then you can go down here and do an adjust colors on the texture. Alternatively, just like we were talking about, instead of doing it on the texture map, you can also just go into polypaint here and say adjust uh, polypaint if you'd like.